Now, very early on, uh, Buddhism ran into a very serious theological and philosophical question. Remember, in Buddhism, you are your own savior. There's no God to help you. So, one day, a monk took ill. And he's laying in his bed. In fact, he had vomited. He was all messed up. And so, the monks go to Buddha. They say, what shall we do? If everyone is his own savior, then how shall we respond to this monk who needs help? This is the answer that I understand Buddha to have given. Help him. Wash him up. Take care of him. But be cautious that you not be entangled thereby. Now, what does that mean? Help him as an individual, but be very careful that you don't sympathize with his situation in such a way that you feel sorry for him. For if you feel sorry for him, that means that you are now having wrong desire. You're suffering pain because of him. You don't want that. Because see, the key to Buddhism is to escape pain, to escape suffering. So if you feel so badly for this man that you go home that night and say, oh my, I was terrible. I just feel so sorry for that old guy. I mean, he's going to die. You know, we want to do more for him. If you have that kind of spirit that we should really help him, uh, then you have become, you've lost your journey to Arahat for you're getting distracted by compassion. In fact, compassion should be for all humanity generally. Try to avoid too much compassion for a particular person. So be generous, be Be compassionate, but be careful. Just be careful you don't get entangled thereby. So that's the philosophy that began to develop. But, but, people began to say, you know, this thing of getting into nirvana, we need a boost. Yes, we have the three refuges, the Sangha, the Buddha, the Dharma. We do that. But we just can't quite make it. Even though we stay in a, in a Sangha for years, still we don't have the proper mental cultivation and the proper desires and so forth that we should have. We need a boost. Uh, a boost to get us over the, over the wall that we can't quite make it. And so that, that question about giving a boost, that question about showing compassion, eventually brought a huge divide within Buddhism so that you have two wings of Buddhism. The one wing is referred to as the Theravada. The Theravada are the ways of the ancestors. That's Orthodox Buddhism. No help from Buddha or or anybody else. You're on your own. But the Mahayana, the Mahayana, which means, interestingly, it means the greater vehicle, (laughs) the Mahayana say, yes, there is a way to get a boost. In fact, Buddha himself demonstrated that. Now, how did Buddha demonstrate that there's a way to get a boost so you can get into nirvana? This is the way the philosophy goes. They say, this is the Mahayana Buddhas, the greater vehicle. They say that when Buddha acquired Arahat, as he did there in the Deer Park, that wonderful day when under the bow tree, when he claims that enlightenment came to him, Buddha became an arahat. So at death, he is ready to escape the cycle and be absorbed into the universal nirvana. But just as he's ready to make the plunge into nirvana, he says, oh, yeah, there's so many people that need help. So why don't I just wait for a while? And so instead of plunging into nirvana, which he can do now because he's an arahat, Buddha pauses on the edges of nirvana and invests his energies, after he has died, he invests his energies in giving people a boost. And so, in effect, Buddha becomes a savior figure. That by not going into nirvana, he accumulates Huge stores of grace, they say. 
grace, huge stores of grace, that those who worship him and honor him, he bestows this grace upon them, and this grace gives them a boost to get into nirvana. And that's Mahayana Buddhism. You know, as I see it as a Christian, looking at Buddhism, it seems to me that Buddhism says, we need help, we do need grace, you know, but in the absence of knowing about Christ, Buddha becomes the one to whom they look to give them the grace they need to make it. So that's the whole world of Mahayana Buddhism. They push it much further than that, in fact. There's a whole cluster of Buddha-like figures called Bodhisattvas who have done the same thing like Buddha did. They're ready to enter Nirvana. They have now acquired Arahat. They're ready to make the plunge, and they say, oh, just like Buddha did not enter nirvana, we'll wait also. And so in societies and cultures around the Buddhist world, you have these divinities and even temples built towards them. We won't take time to go into all of them. But you have these divinities that are considered to be bodhisattvas who give you favor and mercy, a boost so that you can make it into nirvana with help, with the help of Buddha and with these other bodhisattvas. It's quite a phenomenon. And so this means that Buddhism, by developing this, uh, this concept of bodhisattvas, has become very vigorously, uh, shall I say, syncretistic in absorbing many other divinities into the movement that have nothing to do with Buddha's original philosophy at all. I was um, a couple years ago in uh, central Bangkok and went to the uh, temple of the Emerald Buddha, who is the center of Thailand Buddhism, this little Emerald Buddha that the emperor is very much involved in caring for and so forth. He's a, he's a carving out of, out of uh, beautiful stones. Emerald, I think it is. Emerald, he called the Emerald Buddha. I went to that temple and I was astounded as I looked around the walls of the temple at the many, many divinities or um, uh, carved on those temple walls. In fact, as I recall, there was even the Virgin Mary with Jesus uh, on those temple walls, um, as I recall. But uh, if not there, elsewhere I've seen that. The, these many, many um, religious figures that different religions and so forth have embraced were on those walls which is to say that this kind of Mahayana Buddhism, which is so prevalent in Thailand, was expanding, had been expanding over the years to absorb into its system a whole variety of, uh, of divinities called bodhisattvas. They're called bodhisattvas. So there's two wings in Buddhism. The Mahayana wing, which says, you need a help. Buddha is there to help you, and bodhisattvas are there to help you, to get the boost. And the other wing that says, no, you're on your own. There's no one to help you, which is an orthodox form of Buddhism, the kind, as I see it, that Buddha himself embraced. I don't think he embraced the bodhisattva kind, the uh, Mahayana kind of Buddhism. That's, that's, a, that's a new development apart from what Buddha was about. TBS Seminary is a nonprofit project. Our joint effort will bring about the common purpose of making Christian education available around the world and developing good Christian servant leaders. You have a unique opportunity to partner in this effort through your prayer and or financial support of TVS Ministry. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.